folks. Um, so welcome back for another uh, video that we're continuously talking about Swift UI. Um, but this video is going to be a continuation from the last video, which was probably called uh, Dependency Injection, Async Away. So you have you haven't checked out the video yet, please go. Uh, you can find the link either down below or you can find the link at the right top corner uh, with a pop-up. Um, so let's get started with this video here. So basically what we want to do is actually downloading the data and uh, since inside the data we have an image URL we want to properly show the image on the table view cell with, uh, your, uh, with the URL caching. Um, we want to cache that on the onto the memory so we can uh, always reload that um, as fast as we can um, so that we don't have any delay or anything on the application but of course there's many different ways to cache this you can use a local uh, persistent storage uh, you also have option using NS cache and that's more that, that's also caching to a disk as well um, but yeah there are so many different ways to do this but uh, for the demonstration I'm just gonna focusing on for this video actually I'm just only focusing on the URL cache uh, we of course we're gonna write our own uh, caching uh, methods and all that stuff um, so that you can see how they're done uh, with the dependency injection in my and also in the Swift UI way so let's get started I think I'm gonna get started with creating the cell so I can uh, so I can actually uh, mapping out what I will try to do uh, so let's start with um, <clears throat> I start with uh, the struct of a main cell. So point of view, and we're gonna actually passing in uh, this location here. We should need employee. Um, so let's call it uh, let employee. So employee gonna be that. And then uh, we're gonna call body. And then we want to show basically three things. We do have quite a lot of data coming from there, from that one API above. Uh, but I think for this demo, we, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna show you the full name and biography and a image as well. Um, so let's uh, follow. I think uh, we want to show the image on the right, uh, on the left side, then the name and the biography on the right. So let's just start with H stack. I'm gonna comment the image part out for now until we uh, finish up the image repository this layer. Uh, next, we're gonna start with the V stack. Uh, I'm gonna start with a text, uh, then I'm just gonna call employee, then full name. And I'm gonna copy that, then go in just with another biography. I uh, might want to give a little bit of style so we can differentiate. Uh, the two texts. So I'm just gonna use whatever this default there. Uh, I think the headline is uh, kind of make more sense. It's not too big. Uh, you can of course look up online. There's uh, definitely sources out there to show you exactly what's the size of this uh, default version of font. Uh, I'm gonna use the cap. I think it was caption. Caption. Yeah. Caption for the like the subtitles. Thing. Um, yeah, I think that that should be it to display um, whatever we need to show on the screen here. So let's start with adding this. Let's start with by calling this new cell employee. I'm going to pass the employee value right here. Now let's give it a shot. Oh, as you can see. We do actually uh, get all the data in here properly to the cell, but we did not align up properly. So that's easy fix. Uh, let me just call alignment right here. Uh, don't leave it. That should be good right now. We can get rid of the content since we already have the data contents dumped below. There you go. Now we have our name and uh, biography for the user. So now the next thing we want to do is actually retrieving the image URL. So for the image layer, uh, I think I'm going to start with another protocol so we can 
definitely focus on the dependency injection um, part of the thing, uh, just in case in a, just in case we want to do some uh, unit tests as well. But also feel free to comment down below if you guys want me to show some uh, uh, practice on unit tests. I'm, I'm not sure it will be the best practice, but definitely um, something you can look into and then you can learn from and potentially can help you out on your journey of doing iOS. So protocol, let's just call it a re repo, uh, let's call it uh, image repo uh, interface. Uh, we want to do a few things. I uh, want to actually do a get image. Um, probably want to pass in the URL of the image. Since we're already retrieving the data, come back from uh, right here, this URL. So I think we can just directly pass a URL into it without any issues. Of course, we want to throw um, async throw back since we're doing a Swift UI. And we want to probably return a, um, a UI image instead since uh, um, the Swift UI image is actually a view component. Uh, under the hood, it does handle the UI image on all the stuff, but I think for the purpose of this, we want to actually returning a actual image. Um, so the next thing I think we want to do is actually saving, um, save to cache, save to cache. Um, I'm not quite sure we want what well, we exactly want to pass this in there yet, um, but I think we'll figure out um, because. Wait, actually, actually, we want to actually um, when we download the picture. I think it's a good idea to save as a. I think whenever we're saving the cache, that's a saving as a URL request. So technically, we could still. Um, I think we can we can still save that, uh, but for now, let's just skip that part. I'll come back for that. Um, next thing I think we want to do is actually fetching, fetching the image uh, from the internet. And that definitely going to have a async throw, and I'm probably also going to have a UI image as well. Uh, next thing we want to do is create a class that's adopting this protocol. So let's just call an uh, image uh, repo, and let's call image repo interfaces. Uh, we want to actually uh, have a dependency injection for the URL cache, I believe, and a URL session as well. So let's start with a private, uh, private, uh, let URL session, uh, URL session. Let's do a var just in case. Um, probably then I want to do a. I think this can actually go with uh, lab here. Um, cache and is a URL cache uh, equal to. Actually, no, not equal to anything here. We want to then let's inject into it. So let's just call it URL session and URL session. And we want to give a default value of URL session configuration and enter mode. So we want to, we do not want to use any under the hood URL session default caching uh, as mechanism because we're going to do by our side. Uh, we want to also cache the, give a, a, a default cache as well. So URL cache uh, equal to uh, URL cache dot, I think it's a shared, yes. So by default, URL cache is actually using about I think it was a four megabyte and a twenty megabyte some uh, on the disk because it's it's actually using both on memory and disk. But I think it, by default, it's actually trying to use on memory first. Um, I think there's a documentation on Apple. They actually explain that you need to have a five percent difference uh, in order for it to work properly. I think by default is. Uh, to make a buy, I believe. Um, but every, yeah, it should, uh, the normal URL cache uh, should work. 
Uh, next one, I want to actually uh, uh, catch them, catch those value that we default, uh, that we assign to, or whatever value you pass into it. Uh, then self dot cache, this cache. Next one, uh, we want to actually start to implementing all the uh, function that we have we created above on the protocol. Uh, next is fetch. So for this get image, basically we wanted to do a, a simple check as to see if we are caching the image. If we did, then we just want to directly use the cached uh, volume. If not, I definitely want to make a call to retrieve that cached volume. So uh, we can actually just say um, if, um, I believe is uh, if cache the uh, um, cache response requests, I think we need to create a request, URL request with the image URL. So it understands and so let request equal to uh, URL request. Oops, URL request and URL. Then we're going to pass this request in. This is dot data uh, as image as UI image. Actually, no, um, we want to get the data out. So let cached uh, data equal to this. Then we want to actually let um, image equal to UI image. Then I believe there is a method, yes, data in there. We can just use the cached data, pass the cached data in, then try to get that image. If we get the image, we can actually just return um, the uh, image. Otherwise, uh, we want to actually uh, download the image. So let's just call um, try away uh, fetch image with the URL. Now here we want to actually download that image. So we uh, we can actually just call let a data uh, response. Uh, equal to a try URL session. Uh, we can just use the URL session we did above, we had above, then uh, data from a URL. And now we can actually properly handle the uh, response. So got lab uh, HTTP URL response equal to response um, as HTTP URL response. And I want to check the status. Uh, just a really simple handling the uh, HTTP URL response. Uh, of course, in a real case, in a real world usage, you might want to consider handle some more uh, status code because uh, some of, depending on your project and uh, what you're trying to do there. So I'm gonna just gonna check to 200. Uh, if there's any errors, I'm just gonna throw back a URL um, error. Um, and that's going to be a, I'm just going to save that server response for now. Uh, after that, we actually want to, um, so after that, basically, oh, we're missing something, oh, we're missing away, because that is a async await function. So right after that, we can actually um, convert that data into an image and trying to save that information into um, trying to save that information into the cache. Uh, so missing, ret oh, okay. Yeah, we also need to return something here as well. Um, but let me see, let image, uh, equal to UI image. We need to get the data, which we already have above. And now we have the image. And we want to return that image. But also at the same time here, we want to save that piece of data here. Um, I think we should call like uh, cache cache dot um, store response. 
And also, you need to create a let a cached URL response equal to uh, cached URL response with with the URL response and the data. And then we want to simply store this cache URL response for a URL, a particular URL request, um, which we can definitely achieve by doing this. Somebody made that URL request with URL and that's the URL. So that's how technically you store the cache to the URL cache, the image to the URL cache. Um, I then need to return that. Also, we might want to consider unwrap this uh, information here. Yeah, I think it makes sense just to return the optional. Yep, then we also have to uh, change our things here. Uh, we can actually move this to here, but um, that will actually that will actually have a lot like uh, things we need to change. Uh, yeah, also this will have to return it. Um, basically, if you want to take this out, you can actually take this out. Um, technically, I probably will not need this protocol here, but I can definitely create a separate function just to get the things out of there so it can be more clear. Uh, we can definitely just pass it in a save, save to cache uh, URL um, URL and um, we can also URL just going to be a URL and we're going to pass a response uh, back as well so it's going to be URL response. Uh, we can also pass the data back uh, pass the data into it, and then we can just move those code into that. So we'll handle things uh, separately. Now you can call save cache the URL uh, response and data. And of course, if you want to be more secure, you can actually double check, see if you actually have the image, then before you make a save to it, uh, just in case that somehow the image, you, you actually fail to download the image, uh, or something that happened, then just in case this code got called. Uh. So yeah, so that will be the cross for us to actually uh, handle the image caching. And we can actually plug this right into our code with our view model, and we can get from there. Uh, so we can actually create another uh, client of var. Uh, it's called image table, and we we'll get let's just pass this uh, image group interface into it. And then, of course, we want to uh, have a dependency injection for this as well, so we can properly create a unit test for the view model. Uh, we can just call the repo in the interface and then give a default value to it. I think we're missing one from this. Okay, there we go. Uh, then we just have to assign the value uh, to catch that item to the above variable. Right. So now we actually can have. Uh, another function or something to call for this. Uh, we can just create another one, so it's main actor. Um, and uh, function get image. Uh, I think we definitely need to pass this URL in, uh, but we can definitely skip that to hide that name so we don't have too much things going on in front of UI code there. Uh, we can have the async, uh, async throw as well. We still need to handle those things on the UI level. Uh, then we can actually just call uh, image ripple dot uh, get oop, get image uh, URL. Um, 
that should return us with a, a URL, a UI image. And I think we can, what we can do is actually, we can publish that data, make it easier. Um, or we don't have to do that way because just in case, I mean, you could do either way. Uh, I think uh, I'm probably just gonna stick with the UI image optional for now. Uh, we're just gonna directly through the image back to the user from this point on here. And then we can do a return, uh, try away. So it will handle us all the image caching and give us a image back. Uh, or you can actually give it a default image uh, if you feel like that's uh, the way you wanna go. Uh, you can do is if that um, if that uh, image equal to uh, try away you know, image local dot uh, get image URL then you either return this image uh, or you can return a default image uh, let's just grab something here. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a image directly from the asset symbol here. So let's just say a person maybe, something that makes sense. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, okay. So let's just use this for now. So maybe this one. You can choose anything here. Uh, it should be pretty simple to use. Uh, then we can just um, return a UI image with a, I think it's a system name, yes, system name, then put that name in there, and you can return a default image. Oh, and also this is also going to complain uh, for, but for now, I think we should be good. We can use a uh, exclamation point here, because uh, we know for sure that definitely will return us a uh, proper picture uh, from the SF of symbol. Uh, this library, unless something going on, then they have something happened. You did not get an image back. Then, then I, I mean, that would probably either be a uh, Apple issue or a developer issue or uh, something you're mistyping the name for the SF symbol image. Uh, but otherwise, it should be fine there. I, but if you really want, you can also do something like uh, return an empty image as well. But um, but for our case, I think we just can just use exclamation point here. And once we've done that, uh, we can go back to here. So now we actually uh, also need to pass in our view model so we can actually make a call of that. So we can use observe, observe the object to observe uh, the single source of truth from the state object. Uh, the reason use observe object here is uh, we do not want to create multiple um, view models, it will be, I mean, the whole point is here is to have a single source of truth. So um, the state object will actually keep the instantiation or the word instance of that uh, alive whenever SwiftUI redraws and observed object will be re-instantiating uh, whatever that you put in there um, whenever the SwiftUI redraws. So, Let's just uh, use this since we do not really, since here the view model it does not really need to instantiate something new. We want to continue observing or using whatever we had previously. Um, yeah, so we'll call it view model. And then down below here, uh, we can actually. We can read a simple call. Uh, we can still use that task. Let's use a normal do catch, uh, do catch let error. And then we gonna make a call, which is a return a picture for us. Uh, we can probably have a private, a private, uh, uh, probably not private actually. We want to actually make sure the data updates. That's why I said you can actually use a published if you want to, but we can use it just a stay. You can catch the, the volume of this. Uh, stay is called image. Uh, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna wait, uh, make it a UI image. Um, 
Then we're gonna call the view model. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna use the image equals retry array um, view model dot get image. I'm gonna pass it in an employee um, image URL into it. Uh, then if there's any errors, of course, we want to print out any uh, issues. So this is called print out the localized description there. For the image, uh, we can just call the normal search UI image. And then you, uh, we can initiate, uh, we can instantiate the UI image. So that should give us the image we need for the cell. And also probably handles the URL caching. Um, and yeah, we're also missing a few things here because we already at the place in there, uh, in the main cell. So I want to pass in the view model for sure. Image, we do not really care. Um, we can technically set is a stay private bar, so we don't have to pass anything into it. Uh, employee, definitely. And that should be it. Let's do a quick run. Oh, where it looks like we're missing something here. Um, Insert image. Uh, it's actually com uh, complete, but it's a private. Okay, I should move this up here. I think that should be able to fix the problem. Oh, there's something wrong here. Okay. All right, well, just for the sake of uh, demonstration, let's just uh, give it an empty image. So it does not ask us for anything. Um, oh, we do have an image. Um, but there's a slightly problem there. Image is kind of too big. So let's try to resize. Um, I think it's a resize mode. And uh, uh, I think we need to also give, give a, uh, a scale to fill and a uh, frame. As well, uh, let's just do width. Width, again, let's call it 80. Uh, and then height, let's call it another 80. Uh, and also maybe we'll run, uh, run the run corner, a corner, a corner, a corner, a corner radius. So let's call it the corner radius 80 divided by 2. And hopefully that's making a circle. Much better. And you can just uh, drag down and then you can move up down here. It should move pretty fast. And you should not see any issues with the images there. And yeah, there you go, guys. That's how you actually properly creating a uh, image cache layer uh, to have your own image caching handle um, for your table view cells. And please leave me down, uh, leave me some comment down below if you have any questions. And uh, hopefully you enjoy this video. And please give a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And thank you very much.